Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. come to order. Please take your seats. Pursuant to applicable law and my determination that attendance by remote means is necessary because uh, a fully in-person meeting is not practical or prudent due to the declared public health uh, disaster caused by COVID-19. This meeting is being conducted uh, by video conference in part. We will now have a roll call vote to establish quorum. Please note that your yes or present response will be deemed a yes vote when this quorum call is used as a reference vote for later items. Uh, will the aldermen uh, please make sure that are online, please make sure to have your microphones unmuted. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, and to please stay quiet so I can hear. <laughs> Alderman Laspada. Present. Alderman Laspada is present. Alderman Hopkins. Hybridly present. Alderman Hopkins is present. Alderman Dow. Alderman Dow. Oh, she's frozen. Okay, so she's present. Alderman King. Present. Alderman King is present. Alderman Harrison. Present. Alderman Harrison is present. Alderman Sawyer. Here. Alderman Sawyer is present. Alderman Mitchell. Present. Alderman Mitchell is present. Alderman Harris. Here. Alderman Harris is present. Alderman Beal. Yep. Alderman Beal is present. Alderman Zalowski Garza. Here. Alderman Zalowski Garza is present. Alderman Thompson. Present. Alderman Thompson is present. Alderman Cardness. Present. Alderman Cardness is present. Alderman Quinn. Here. Alderman Quinn is present. Alderman Burke. Here. Alderman Burke is present. Alderman Lopez. Fully present. Alderman Lopez is present. Alderman Coleman. Present. Alderman Coleman is present. Alderman Moore. Alderman Moore is present. Alderman Curtis. Here. Alderman Curtis is present. Alderman O'Shea. Here. Alderman O'Shea is present. Alderman Taylor. Here. Alderman Taylor is present. Alderman Brooken. Here. Alderman Brookins is present. Alderman Rodriguez. Present. Alderman Rodriguez is present. Alderman Tabaras. Present. Alderman Tabaras is present. Alderman Scott. Present. Alderman Scott is present. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Present. Alderman Cicho Lopez is present. Alderman Maldonado. Alderman Maldonado. Alderman Burnett. Present. Alderman Burnett is present. Alderman Irvin. In the flesh. Alderman Irvin is present. Alderman Talaferro. Present. Alderman Talaferro is present. Alderman Raboyas. Present, Madam Clerk. Alderman Raboyas is present. Alderman Cardona. Alderman Cardona is present. Alderman Waguspack. Alderman Waguspack is present. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Present. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez is present. Alderman Austin. Here. Alderman Austin is present. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Present. Alderman Ramirez Rosa is present. Alderman Viegas. Present. Alderman Viegas is present. Alderman Mitz. Present. Alderman Mitz is present. Alderman Spasado. Alderman Spasado is present. Alderman Nugent. Alderman Nugent is present. Alderman Vasquez. Present and COVID safe. Alderman Vasquez is present. Alderman Napolitano. Alderman Napolitano is safe, or sorry, present. <laughs> Alderman Riley. Uh, it's, good, it's good to be back and I'm present. Alderman Riley is present. Alderman Smith. Present. Alderman Smith is present. Alderman Tunney. Alderman Tunney. Alderman Gardner. Alderman Gardner is present. Alderman Kappelman. Present. Alderman Kappelman is present. Alderman Martin. Present. present. Alderman Martin is present. Alderman Osterman. Present. Alderman Osterman is present. Alderman Haddon. Present. Alderman Haddon is present. Alderman Silverstein. Present. Alderman Silverstein is present. Alderman Dowell is present, clerk. Alderman Dowell is present. Your Honor, we have 48 members present and we have a quorum. Quorum, we will now have the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise and join me. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing uh, for the invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Peter Hong of New Community Covenant Church. Uh, Pastor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Will you all join me in prayer this morning? Gracious and powerful God, we come to you today tired, weary, and angry and brokenhearted. In the midst of maddening injustice and the relentless work of recovery, we remind ourselves that you're a God who sees, who knows, and is well acquainted with suffering. You're a God who fights for the liberation of the left out, the marginalized, the powerless, for life to emerge from the tombs, and whose anger turns over tables and rebukes Satan, speaking in our midst. We know that we can bring all of who we are to you, for where else would we turn? We bring our honesty, our questions, our pain, and our rage to you. In you, we are offered rest, safe space to grieve, reminder that our embodied humanity matters, and an invitation to be fully seen and fully known by you. We need you, God, and we need your good news to renew us, to tether us, to transform us each moment and each day in this season. Come, Lord Jesus, and interrupt the injustice and violence rampant in our world. Come, Lord Jesus, and set up righteousness and justice in the center of our lives and in our churches, in our communities, and in our world. Lord Jesus, invade and protect the courtrooms and streets of Minneapolis, the alleys and rally centers of Chicago, the mourning and recovery ongoing in Atlanta, the cages full of our children on the border, and the again and again spaces where black and brown life continue to be cut short. Come Lord Jesus and rebuke all the lies that would pit communities of color against each other. Come Lord Jesus, and disrupt and interrupt the evil of racism, fear, anger, or abuse of authority, and all the ways that the church is complicit in this violence. Come, Lord Jesus, and heal in Indianapolis and in Boulder and in too many cities reeling from gun violence. Come, Lord Jesus, interrupt and invade. Bring life, truth, and your spirit. Holy Spirit, we need you to bring strength and healing to our communities that are hurting, to your church, to our leaders who lead us forward. Holy Spirit, we need you to protect our children and our teenagers, to minister to our mothers and our fathers, to tenderly hold those who are grieving. Holy Spirit, we need you to heal those who are sick, empower those searching for work, and bring to those isolated and alone in this season. Holy Spirit, we need you to bring about confession, repentance, wisdom, and courage from those who may be unsure of how to respond to racial injustice, but whose spirits are tender to you. Holy Spirit, we need you to speak life, promise, and possibility into spaces that we may be afraid or too weary or too weighted down by death, because we know and we declare that you are a God who does some of your best work in the dark. Now, Father, I lift up these men and women today. Thank you for all the ways that they serve our local communities. Reveal yourself to them and bring them closer to you, each in their own unique way, that they may hear your voice clearly and distinctly. Speak to them of truth, integrity, justice, and fairness. Return them, we pray, to the good and lofty aspirations they had when they ran for office in the first place, to help others to right wrongs and to make the world a more beautiful place. Give them a desire to promote things that honor you and not just their own political careers. Cut through the clutter of politics as usual and self-promotion. Let them hear your voice. Speak to them of honor and sacrifice. Please give them strength and wisdom and guide them in decisions that they may always put love first. Give them discernment, humility, empathy, and willingness to put the common good above politics. May they manage their teams and projects with love keep their hearts pure and their eyes turned towards your face is a work in the best interests of the people that they are called to serve. Surround them with people from all walks of life and many backgrounds. Bring to them people of high moral character and spiritual maturity. 
among the many voices which they cry out to them every day, may they hear your voice above all the others. And Father, strengthen them with wisdom and grace for the heavy burdens that they carry today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now we will begin our pu public comments. The council will now begin the public comment period, which is limited to a maximum of 30 minutes. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Speakers cannot yield or transfer their time to another speaker. Any written comments that have been submitted will be posted and made available for automatic review. The first speaker today is Mr. George Blakemore. Good morning to the citizens of our global city of Chicago. All is not well. Again, this dog and pony show is here again. Institutional racism is still alive. What went on in Minnesota is going on right now in the city of Chicago with our policemen. I challenge you, it's like, would you hear me speaking? I'm from the public. And, and you're not paying me any attention. However, when I saw that tweeter about your personal life, <laughs> we don't need this in our city. We voted for you to, to have no distraction. Institutional racism is still here in the police department. And you're giving some of that money that came, that stimulus money, to the policeman. Uh, I challenge you, whenever you have a group of policemen to come, that all people are represented. The black policemen, white policemen, and Hispanic. I looked out today, and you had about 100 policemen down here, and 99% of them was really white. If, so whatever went on in Minnesota, the fight is not over. The battle is not over. Institutional racism is still alive here in our city. So the dog and pony show is here, and I'm here. God got me here. The dog and pony show is not over. The war is not over. The battle is not over. We have not got a victory yet. Where there's no justice, there's no peace. How long have my people been crying out? No justice, no peace. We should overcome one day. When is that day gonna come? When is it gonna come? Again, Dr. King says that Chicago is one of the most racist cities in the United States. And if he was here today, it's still true. It's still true. And I'm not here to beat up on a Miss Lightfoot, but these white folks are still in control. And you black aldermen are just figureheads here. These white men run this city. So do our vote count? Can you vote your way out of poverty? We got no contracts when it came to this marijuana. Long as the black is selling marijuana, lock him up but you need to legalize for our people. We should overcome one day. When and how and where. Thank you, Mr. Blakemore for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Deborah Hawkins. Ms. Hawkins, are you there? Our next speaker is Jamie Lyons Doyle. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good morning, members of the Chicago City Council. 
My name is Professor Jamie Lyons Doyle, and I'd like to thank you for hearing my comments today. I've written many of you before and have spoken at numerous council meetings in favor of Alderman Hopkins' ordinance to close the puppy mill loophole law. We, the residents of Chicago, are simply asking you to enforce what you have already clearly supported and passed into law in 2014 by a vote of 41, 49 to 1 with the one dissent vote now a co-sponsor of the current ordinance. Right now, in my opinion, and based upon my experience in animal welfare and rescue work, along with the verified documentation that has been reported by animal welfare organizations, the Chicago Tribune, and numerous cited violations by Chicago Animal Care and Control, it is crystal clear that some businesses are disregarding the 2014 ordinance. Please consider the message you are sending to Chicago residents and other cities around the nation that you are allowing this to occur. So I proudly come to you today respectfully asking that you clearly, ethically, and morally do the right thing and simply follow the due process of your own 2014 ordinance and vote to pass Alderman Hopkins' ordinance. Let's get this finished today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Doyle, for your comments. Our next speaker is Ms. Deborah Hawkins. Ms. Hawkins, are you there? Could you please unmute your speaker? I have unmuted it. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Do I have the floor? You have Hello, the floor, do Ms. I have Hawkins. the floor? Yes, we okay. Do. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Deborah Hawkins. I am a homeowner and I have been a resident of the seventh ward for over 33 years. I am calling in today to voice my concerns regarding the potential relocation of General Iron to the south side of Chicago. The concerns of my community and surrounding neighborhoods is that the south side of Chicago is considered a dumping ground. It's no secret that the residents of Lincoln Park considered General Iron a nuisance to their neighborhood. The, res the residents of the South Side have been underserved for decades, and all you have to do is to take a short drive from the South Side of Chicago to the North Side to see the glaring differences. Up North, the vibrant business districts, restaurants, and nightlife, which is the complete opposite of the south side of Chicago. So while new businesses, commerce, and retailers open up on the north side of Chicago, the only thing black and brown residents of the south side can look forward to is further pollution from General Iron and others who continue to compromise our air quality, our health, and destroy our quality of life. Why must our communities continue to get the short end of the stick and face the burden of additional industrial polluters in our neighborhoods? The south side of Chicago is not a dumping ground, and we deserve to live in healthy, safe, vibrant, thriving communities, just like the residents of the north side of the city. We feel General Iron's relocation to the south side is akin to environmental racism and to allow General Iron to invade our neighborhoods would be a further slap in the face to our neighborhoods and we deserve better as citizens of Chicago. That is all I have to say and thank you for the opportunity to speak our concerns. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins, for your comments. Our next speaker is Ekaterina Vinia. Um, yes, good morning, everyone. Hello? We can hear you. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ekaterina Demian, and I'm speaking on behalf of Chicago Alliance for Animals. In August of 2020, uh, Companion Animal Protection Society has investigated Chicago's three pet store shops again, and this is what we found. 
at Pocket Puppies on August 19th of 2020. When I walked into the store, there was only one puppy. Per employee, it's because they didn't receive their delivery due to the civil unrest in the city. He said they would be getting the new shipment on Tuesday. David was his name, and he arranged the prices for dogs from 2400 to 4800 He said a few times that all the dogs come from rescues, and they do not use any breeders. He said you can get the name of the rescue from the microchip after you purchase the dog. David stated that the dogs come from the Illinois area, and they can even give you their date of birth. Pocket Puppies actually uses Dog Mother Rescue, which is run by a woman in Missouri. She owns Lone Wolf Kennels for breeding and brokering, and Lone Wolf Pets LLC for transporting. Um, Caps investigated her facility 20 years ago, finding many, many USDA violations. Before I left, he handed me the card, which also did not mention that the puppies are rescued. Next one was Pet Love Pet Center on August 28th, 2020. I walked in and saw approximately 30 puppies. Per employee, the puppies were from a shelter in Joplin, Missouri, called Pet Connection, Pet, Pet Connect Rescue, I'm sorry. She then gave me a handout stating uh, that same information. We can tell you that Hobo Canine Rescue in Breed, Iowa, which was started by the owner of JK's puppies, also in Britt, was originally the one providing puppies to the pet love and park pet shop. Caps worked with Iowa Attorney General to shut down Hobo K9 and Rescue Pets Iowa in March 2020. Caps received an online complaint from a woman who spent nearly $2,000 on a puppy that was uh, very sick and she, she had additional $2,000 in bed bills, um, all of their dogs actually cost anywhere from three to $5,000. I asked the employee if the puppies were vetted and she, was, she seemed confused. Next trip was to the park pet shop on August 28th. When I walked in, I also saw about 30 puppies. Her employee, the dogs were coming from the rescue, but they did not give the name of the rescue. They say they don't use the breeders, although their website sell, says specifically they sell the dogs. The girl did know when they were born, we can confirm that they obtained fake puppies from Hobo Canine Rescue. Thank you, Ms. Vinia, for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Jose Perez. Hello, can you hear me? Welcome, Mr. Perez, we can hear you. Okay, good morning to everyone. My name is Jose Perez. I live in the 31st Ward, Alderman Cardona's Ward. I'd like to begin by saying that I'm a volunteer at CACC, Chicago Animal Care and Control, located on Western Avenue and 28th Street. CACC serves as a shelter rescue that takes in animals living in the streets in harsh, cruel conditions and helps them be placed in a warm, loving, caring household via adoption. Together with my family, uncles, cousins, parents, we've adopted over 15 stray animals, all rescues. The times I have volunteered at CACC, the majority of the time, all I do is clean animal cages. While there, I am exposed to them and their personalities. I pet them, interact with them, play with them, and ultimately build a bond with them. And then one day, I don't get to see them again. They get euthanized. The main adversary of shelters like CACC are pet stores, puppy mills, backyard breeders. That's why I'm calling to ask if you can all please support S02020-2827, the puppy mill bill. If you don't want to volunteer helping CACC in person at their facility, there is another way to help the workers, animals, and volunteers of CACC, and that's by supporting as 0 20 20 28 27 this will stop the flow of puppies and dogs into chicago from unscrupulous sources like puppy mills and backyard breeders and will help promote adoption from shelters shelters like chicago animal care and control we're trying to control the animal population by using resources and taxpayers money when we spay and neutered animals and we're letting puppy mill and backyard breeders destabilize chicago animal shelters Chicago City Council members and Alderman Cardona 
Please vote in support of S-02020-2827 today. It's the progressive and humane thing to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Perez, for your comments. Our next speaker is Lucky Camargo. Hi, can you hear me? Welcome, we can hear you. Hello. Thank you. My name is Lucky Camargo and I oppose the transfer of public land located at 31st and Kedzie and known as the former site of the Washburn Trade School. In April 2019, neighbors began to engage with officials at CPS, the Board of Education, and the Chicago Department of Development and Planning. We attended monthly Board of Ed meetings and demanded that the 11 acres of public land remain public and not sold to any private developer. With in-person meetings on hold last year, in August of 2020, we met on Zoom with Maurice Cox and other staffers from the Department of Planning and Development. And we were assured that nothing would happen with the 11 acres of public land. Maurice Cox explained that his development strategy focused on small lot size projects. He reassured us that the massive project proposed by the hospital was unfunded and unfeasible. We trusted his words. On March 2nd, 2020, imagine, to my surprise, to learn from WGN News Report that the city was in the process of transferring the 11 acres of public land to the private hospital. No notification came from any of the people that we had met with CPS, Board of Ed, the Department of Development and Planning, and certainly not the aldermen. It was only after I reached out to the Department of Planning and Development for an explanation that I learned that the aldermen quickly announced on social media a meeting about 31st and Kedzie just three days in advance. Countless problems of this meeting existed. The inaccessibility for most 22nd Ward residents to participate in a virtual meeting is one. Sadly, even after the alderman's failure to inform us in advance of the disastrous Hilco explosion, this is yet another example of his neglect to properly communicate with 22nd Ward residents. For the 31st and Kedzie public land site, here are the major issues with the development. One, this is a gentrification accelerator. The half a billion dollar real estate development that St. Anthony's proposes would be built in one of the most economically challenged areas of the city. This is no different than Lincoln Yards or the 78. The UIC Greater Cities Economic Hardship Index classifies Little Village with the second highest score among 77 Chicago communities. In this state of stark inequality, an unscrupulous alderman and his campaign donor, St. Anthony, can exploit desperate people and neglect them with impunity. Low-wage earning people will be displaced, but worse, these same people will bankroll a lavish boondoggle project through hundreds of millions of their tax dollars. 31st and Kedzie is located in an area with substantial air, water, and land pollution. Environmental issues are, the new, are numerous due to metal scrappers, diesel truck congestion that numbers in the thousands daily, and the toxic sanitary canal. Many residents of the ward are uninsured and undocumented, and a private hospital will exclude our neighbors. According to the Department of Public Health in Chicago, 40 to 70 percent of people in Little Village have no health insurance benefits. Instead, we propose that the 11 acres must remain public land, build a publicly funded initiative like a 21st century Washburn that trains and pays students as they train for family wage earning union trades, include a co-location with the regional public library. And lastly, the real estate development that St. Anthony proposed is 10 years old, outdated. Thank you, Ms. Camargo, for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Moises Moreno. Hello, can you all hear me? Welcome, Mr. Moreno, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, members of city council um, and the mayor. Uh, my name is Moises Moreno, uh, executive director of the Pills Alliance. Uh, I am here to speak on behalf uh, of my comrades uh, uh, fighting for police accountability. Um, Definitely good to see that uh, the CPAC and the GAPA were able to come together uh, to uh, focus on one ordinance uh, to highlight the need for community oversight of the Chicago Police Department. Uh, we know that mayoral control of our public institutions simply does not work for the people of Chicago. Uh, we know that the countless settlements of police violence, brutality, and corruption cost the city and the taxpayers way too much money that, could be, that should be redirected to our schools, mental health clinics, uh, and job force uh, development. Um, we also know that, uh, that what we need right now is community oversight of the police. Uh, we are in support of ECPS empowering communities for public safety. Uh, we understand that, that this issue needs to be addressed right now. Uh, this will help give communities uh, the power uh, that they deserve to oversee the uh, Chicago Police Department. Um, and we're gonna, we encourage our city council members that have supported this uh, to push city council uh, folks that are not decided on this this is the time to make the right uh, decision in the city of Chicago when it comes to addressing police violence. Uh, we are seeing, we, we saw what we saw 
uh, with the shooting death of Adam Toledo, and we are we are demanding justice, and we believe that this is the first step uh, towards getting us uh, to, to have justice. And unfortunately, um, there's a, a lack of confidence, and and having the police being over uh, overseen by by the office of the mayor. So we want to push for this reform uh, as soon as possible. Uh, without saying more than that, I think that the, the message is pretty clear. We need police reform. Uh, we, we need to get community control of our police. And, and, and last but not least, I definitely want to send a message to the alderman who has uh, said some really uh, nasty remarks, uh, uh, victim blaming, uh, some of the victims of police of brutality. I want to uh, uh, let you all know that uh, the, your conscience uh, uh, is, is, and your vote is important. So I want everyone to, uh, to consider voting this ordinance and so that we can move forward. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moreno. Your Honor, there are no further speakers who have timely signed up for the public comment period. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the uh, public comment period. Next, our communication. A series of communications from our Honor the Mayor to the Honorable the City Council of the City of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a tax exempt bond for affordable housing for development of WHP IID LLC. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori e. Lightfoot, Mayor, refer to the Committee on Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner on Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the sale of Remova Theater, an adjacent parcel to our Revival Chicago LLC. An associated TIF redevelopment agreement. Your pay bills con favorable consideration. This ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori E. Lightfoot, Mayor. Refer to the Committee on Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Assets, Information, and Services, I transmit here with an ordinance amending Section 2 51 050 of the Code regarding the Commissioner's authority. Your favorable consideration. This ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. Refer to the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of budget director, I transmit here with a fund 925 amendment. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, mayor. Refer to the committee on budget and government operations. Ladies and gentlemen, and at the request of commissioner of planning and development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of a neighborhood opportunity fund redevelopment agreement with South Oakley Venture LLC. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Park District and Forest Preserve District and Cook County to support neighbor space. For favorable consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the sale of city-owned property located at 1828 South St. Louis Avenue to Ruth Wilson. For favorable consideration, this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the acquisition and sale of property located at 9207 South Phillips Avenue. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, a transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of a concession agreement, the Shift Transit LLC Recycle Center Services at Millennium Park. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Special Events, Cultural Affairs, and Recreation. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Transportation, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing construction and associated agreements regarding a grade separation at 71st Street. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for it referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed Mamadou Dikate as Executive Director of Animal Care and Control. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. Refer to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. Ladies and gentlemen, I've appointed Christopher Owen as Commissioner of Human Resources. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. Refer to the Committee on Workforce Development. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here with appointments to various special service areas. Your favorable consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. 
refer to the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed Rick Ricardo Estrada as a member of the Commuter Rail Board Metra from a term effective immediately and expiring June 30th, 2024 to, see, to succeed Corey Thames, whose term has expired. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Ladies and gentlemen, I've appointed Lester L. Barclay as member of the Chicago Transit Board for a term effective immediately and expiring September 1st, 2027 to succeed Terry Peterson, whose term has expired. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori E. Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, hereby inform the City Council that the following documents were filed in my office relating to the respective subjects designated as follows. Notification as to designation of Monica Jimenez as additional proxy to fix signature of mayor to certain documents. Amendment number two to 71st and Stony Island tax increment financing redevelopment plan and project. Draft a Chicago Department of Housing year 2021 low income housing tax credit program. Office of Inspector General's year 2021 first quarter report of investigations, audits and reviews. Inspector General's follow up inquiry of Chicago Police Department's gang database. Committee on Finance Response to Council for, Council Rule 41, Aldermanic Inquiry regarding status of pending legislation. Committee on Committees and Rules Response to Council Rule 41, Aldermanic Inquiry regarding status of pending legislation. I, City Clerk Valencia, also informed the City Council that all those matters which were considered by the City Council at the regular meeting held on March 24th, 2020, and which were required by statute to be published in book or pamphlet form, or in one of more newspapers, were published in pamphlet form on April 21st, 2021, by being printed in full text and printed pamphlet copies of the journal proceedings of the City Council of the City of Chicago. I, City Clerk Valencia, also transmit here with the following miscellaneous communications and reports requiring City Council action. Zoning reclassifications of particular areas, which referred to the Committee on Zoning Landmarks and Building Standards, claims against the City of Chicago, which referred to the Committee on Finance, recommendation by Commission on Chicago Landmarks for designation of Pentecostal Church of Holiness building in building at 4208 West 15th Street as Chicago Landmark, which is referred to Committee on Zoning Landmarks and Building Standards. Your Honor, that concludes mayoral and clerk communications. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, our committee reports, starting with the Committee on Finance. Uh, Chairman Wagus back. Thank you, Madam President. Reporting for the City Council's Committee on Finance, which met on April 19, 2021. Item number one is a communication authorizing an amendment to Municipal Code Section 3-4-151 to require Department of Finance to publish reports of certain revenues. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. Uh, I believe Alderman Riley would like to comment on the matter before we move to a roll call vote. The chair recognizes uh, Alderman Riley. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and thank you, Chairman Wagaspak. Um, I just wanted to um, thank uh, the budget director and the CFO and their staffs and you, Mayor, um, for working with me and, and Chairman Wagaspak on refining the ordinance. but. I do think uh, this is a, a good step in the right direction um, by requiring um, the departments to provide monthly updates and provide those also on their public websites on the collection of revenues and how those compare year over year with the previous year. Um, that'll just be one more tool in the bucket for all of us as members of the council um, to work with the administration proactively and in real time rather than um, have to wait uh, on a quarterly basis. Um, the more information we have, the sooner, the better informed decisions we can make um, so that uh, crises don't come to a head mid-October when we're in budget deliberations. Um, so again, I wanna thank all my colleagues for their support for this ordinance and committee. Um, it is yet one more tool we can use to better serve our constituents. And uh, thank you, um, Madam President, for uh, the support that um, your administration has provided to this effort as well. Uh, I would encourage an I vote. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Chairman Wegg is back. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I concur with Alderman Riley, and I also move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman La Spada. Aye. Alderman La Spada is an aye. Alderman Hopkins. Aye. 
Alderman Hopkins is an aye. Alderman Dow. Aye. Alderman Dow is an aye. Alderman King. Aye. Alderman King is an aye. Alderman Harrison. Aye. Alderman Harrison is an aye. Alderman Sawyer. Aye. Alderman Sawyer is an aye. Alderman Mitchell. Aye. Alderman Mitchell is an aye. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Harris is an aye. Alderman Beal. Yep. Alderman Beal is an aye. Alderman Zalowski Garza. Aye. Alderman Zalowski Garza is an aye. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Thompson is an aye. Alderman Cardness. Aye. Alderman Cardness is an aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Quinn is an aye. Alderman Burke. Aye. Alderman <laughs> Burke is an aye. Alderman Lopez. Aye. Alderman Lopez is an aye. Sorry, everyone's all over the place. Alderman Coleman. Aye. Alderman Coleman is an aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Moore is an aye. Alderman Curtis. Aye. Alderman Curtis is an aye. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman O'Shea is an aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Taylor is an aye. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Alderman Brookins is an aye. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez is an aye. Alderman Tabaras. Aye. Alderman Tabaras is an aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Scott is an aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Alderman Cicho Lopez is an aye. If everyone just could quiet down a little bit in the chamber, please. Thank you. It's hard to hear off Zoom. Alderman Maldonado. Aye. Alderman Maldonado is an aye. Alderman Burnett. Aye. Alderman Burnett is an aye. Alderman Irvin. Aye. Alderman Irvin is an aye. Alderman Talaferro. Alderman Talaferro is an aye. Alderman Raboyas. Aye. Alderman Raboyas is an aye. Alderman Cardona. Aye. Alderman Cardona is an aye. Alderman Wagaspack. Aye. Alderman Wagaspack is an aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez is an aye. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Austin is an aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Alderman Vegas. Alderman Vegas is an aye. Alderman Mitz. Aye. Alderman Mitz is an aye. Alderman Spisato. Alderman Spisato. Oh. Nick Spisato is an aye. Alderman Spisato is an aye. Alderman Nugent. Aye. Alderman Nugent is an aye. Alderman Vasquez. Aye. Alderman Vasquez is an aye. Alderman Napolitano. Aye. Alderman Napolitano is an aye. Alderman Riley. Aye. Alderman Riley is an aye. Alderman Smith. Aye. Alderman Smith is an aye. Alderman Tunney. Aye. Alderman Tunney is an aye. Alderman Gardner. Alderman Gardner is an aye. Alderman Kappelman. Aye. Alderman Kappelman is an aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Martin is an aye. Alderman Osterman. Alderman Osterman is an aye. Alderman Haddon. Aye. Alderman Haddon is an aye. Alderman Silverstein. Aye. Alderman Silverstein is an aye. There are 49 yeas and zero nays. Uh, the motion passes. Um, Alderman Thompson on the motion for reconsideration. Uh, motion we re reconsider the vote. All those in favor of reconsidering the last vote signify by saying aye. All those opposed say nay. Nay. The nays have it. The motion for reconsideration uh, is denied. Chairman Wegg is back. Item number two is communication authorized with the city of Chicago. For the use of tax increment financing funds or TIF funds in the amount of $400,000 for field improvements at Jacob Beidler Elementary School, located at 3151 West Walnut Street in the 27th Ward. 
This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number three is a communication authorizing the city of Chicago to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Board of Education for the use of tax increment financing funds in the amount of $200,000 for certain improvements at Stephen K. Height Elementary School located at 1518 West Granville Avenue located in the 48th Ward. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. There are no objections, so ordered. <laughs> Item number four is a communication authorizing the City of Chicago to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Board of Education for the use of tax increment financing funds in the amount of $9.2 million for major infrastructure renovation and major construction at Kenwood Academy High School, located at 5015 South Blackstone Avenue in the Fourth Ward. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item number five is a communication authorizing the City of Chicago to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Board of Education for the use of tax increment financing fund this amount of $550,000 for certain improvements at William Penn Elementary School, located at 1616 South Avers Avenue in the 24th Ward. The item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item number six is a communication authorizing the City of Chicago to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Board of Education for the use of tax increment financing funds in the amount of $2.5 million for major construction at Wendell Phillips Academy High School located at 244 East Pershing Road in the third ward. This item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Madam President. Item number seven is a communication authorizing the city of Chicago to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Board of Education for the use of tax increment financing funds in the amount of $200,000 for field improvements at West Ridge Elementary School located at 6700 North Whipple Street in the 50th Ward. The item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Madam no President. So ordered. Madam President, uh, item number eight is regarding monthly settlements through the law department, and these will be placed on file with the clerk. So noted. Item, items nine and 10 consist of authorizations for the payment of various small claims against the city and denial of payment of various small claims against the city. If there's no objection, I ask that these items be placed on the omnibus. There are no objections, so ordered. Item 11 consists of one order authorizing two tag day permits for the Les Turner ALS Foundation in Saugnash and Edgebrook and the American Civil Liberties Union citywide um, for direct introduction. If there's no objection, I ask that these items be placed on the omnibus. There are no objections, so ordered. Item number 12 consists of a response to a request under Rule 41. Alderman Raymond Lopez requested a formal response to why a hearing on R-2020-169 had not yet been held. Uh, response has been placed on file with the clerk and was distributed to the council. It was my hope that um, we would have a new chief risk officer for the city before the hearing was held, but um, we're gonna move on regardless and hold a hearing on this, uh, or a meeting on this resolution in May. Um, that would be placed on file as well, Madam President. Madam President, this concludes the report of the Committee on Finance. Thank you, Chairman Wagus. Back. Next up is the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Uh, Ma Chairman Madam Bell. President, Madam President, this is Alderman Ramirez Rose. I'd like to be recorded as voting yes on item one for the Committee on Finance. Uh, Alderman uh, Ramirez Rose. 
Ramirez Rosa, can you just please repeat that and speak louder? We're having difficulty hearing you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to be recorded as voting yes on item one uh, from the Committee on Finance. Thank you. So noted. Next up, Committee on Budget and Government Operations, Chairman Dow. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council reporting for your Committee on the Budget and Government Operations, which held a meeting on April 14, 2021. The committee recommends passage of the following items. A substitute ordinance concerning an amendment to the annual appropriation ordinance year 2021 within fund 925 for the Department of Assets, Information and Services and the Chicago Department of Fire. I move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Objection so ordered. On the same day, the committee also held a subject matter hearing regarding a quarterly update on the fiscal year 2021 annual appropriation. At the time of the meeting, the only information available for the first quarter 2021 report was from January and February 2021. No votes were taken at this subject matter hearing. This concludes my report. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Chairman Dow. Next up, uh, Committee on Committees and Rules, uh, Chairman Harris. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. Reporting for the Committee on Committees Rules in response to Rule 41 status, uh, request two items were previously referred to the committee. Um, item one, R2021-218, a proposal calling for hearings on the leadership of Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown and item two, um, 02021-405, a proposed transfer of funds from Chicago Police Department. Um, to the Department of Family and Support Services, the committee has not initiated an interest in hearing either item. Accordingly, no proceedings have been conducted in the committee on these items. And that concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Harris. Next up, the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology uh, Development. Chairman Villegas. Madam President, members of the City Council, reporting for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development, which held a meeting on April 13th, 2021. The committee recommends passage of the following items. Items one through nine are a series of appointments and reappointments to various special service areas. These items were voted on collectively. Lorraine J. Reef Lacaras as member of SSA number 16, Greektown Hosted Commission. Margaret O'Connell as member of SSA number 20, Southwestern Avenue Commission. Pasquale. Take us one moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I know there's a buzz in the room and it's exciting to be back, but please uh, keep your voices down as the committee reports um, are being read. Please proceed, Chairman Vegas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Pascual Villarreal as a member of SSA number 25, the Little Village Commission. Christopher Murphy as member of SSA number 28, Six Corners Commission. Wayne A. Janik and Rebecca Dorr as members of SSA number 33, Wicker Park Bucktown Commission. Jared P. Dolan and David P. Retker as members of SSA number 34, Uptown Commission. And Margaret O'Connell as member of SSA number 19, 103rd Street, Beverly Commission. I move passage of these items by the first favorable roll call vote, the Committee on Finance, and the associated unsuccessful motion to re reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item 10 on the agenda is an ordinance in support of a Class 6B tax incentive for property located at 3711 South Ashland Avenue. I move passage of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item 11 on the agenda is an ordinance in support of Class 6B tax incentive for property generally located at 3300 East 122nd Street, Building B. I move passage of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item 12 on the agenda is an ordinance in support of a Class 6B tax incentive for property generally located at 3044 East 122nd Street, Building E. I move passage of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item 13 is an ordinance for an amendment to municipal code section 4-6-270 to modify requirements for application or renewal of regulated business licenses for home occupations. If there are any, any of the members that like to speak, I would like to reserve a uh, close. 
Are there any members of the body that like to speak to uh, this ordinance? And uh, the folks who are remote, please, as always, raise your hand. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I believe the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam President. In March of 2021, the unemployment rate in Chicago was 7.7%, a sign of recovery from the previous year that surpassed the 14% national average rate, but nowhere near where we want this city to be. This is why we must be creative as we look at ways to empower and support the small businesses and entrepreneur community rise from this pandemic. This substitute ordinance represents the successful collaboration between partnerships with Elliot Richardson with the Small Business Advocacy Council, Beth Krager at the Institute for Justice at the University of Chicago, BACP, Buildings and Zoning Departments. For the many changes, we are most proud of the equity component within the ordinance that changed from the previous 10% of the total space to now 300 square feet or 25% of the total space. This is vital because it helps move Chicago towards a more robust and accessible economic recovery by giving Chicagoans the wriggle room they need to make ends meet, even when that room is at their home. This is just the beginning of the support we'll be working on for small businesses and entrepreneur community, especially for women and working class business owners who have suffered the most from the impacts of COVID-19. We look forward to continued partnerships and economic recovery from, for the city. I want to thank my colleagues for their support. I move passage of this item by the same motion. There are no objections, so ordered. Madam President, that concludes my report. Next up, Committee on Health and Human Relations, Chairman Sawyer. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. Reporting for your Committee on Health and Human Relations, which held a remote meeting on April 12th, 2021. The committee recommends passage of the following items. The first is the approval of nine appointments to the Board of Health, and they are as follows. Appointment of Carmen Vergara as a member, Appointment of Carolyn C. Lopez as member and president. Appointment of Matthew M. Davis as a member. Appointment of Deborah G. Wesley as a member. Appointment of Rosa E. Martinez Colon as a member. Appointment of Stephen K. Rothschild as a member. Appointment of Joel K. Johnson as a member. Appointment of Janet Y. Lynn as a member. And appointment of Dr. Horace E. Smith as a member of the Board of Health. I move passage of this item by the most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Section so ordered. The second item is a condemnation of U.S. Representative Mary Miller's actions at Moms for America rally in Washington, D.C. on January 5th, 2021. I move passage of this item by the same motions if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. The third item is a substitute ordinance as amended, amending Municipal Code Chapter 4-384 to prohibit retail sale of dogs, cats, and rabbits. I move passage of this item by the same motions if there is no objection. Objection so ordered. That concludes my report. Thank you, Madam President. Chairman Sawyer, next up, the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Chairman Osterman. Thank you, Madam President, members of the City Council. Reporting for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate, which for which a virtual meeting was held on April 15th, 2021, and continued on April 20th, 2021, the committee has a series of reports recommending passage of the following. Item number one is a redevelopment agreement with the Greater Southwest Development Corporation involving sales, transfers, exchanges of various parcels for relocation and development of a new St. Anthony hospital facility in the vicinity of West 35th Street and South Kedzie. I'd like to recognize Alderman Mike Rodriguez uh, on this. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. The, the chair recognizes Alderman Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and thank you, Chair, as well, for your support on the matter um, and that of my colleagues. Um, this is a, a good day for our community. Um, we have a nonprofit hospital uh, that serves over 90%, 90% of its constituents that are both black and brown, significant amounts of charity care, 
uh, that are amongst the highest in the city of Chicago and the region. Uh, this is a good deal for our community and for the city of Chicago. Um, we've had significant community outpouring of support. Over 222 letters were submitted to me previous uh, uh, to our committee meeting. Um, and uh, we held a number of community meetings where um, in one of them, we had 73% support for this endeavor. There was a small number of folks who were, uh, who were in favor of another endeavor, um, but in the democratic process that we put together here, um, I'm very confident that this is, has significant support from my community. This is a hospital uh, and it'll bring a lot of resources to the Southwest side of Chicago and to uh, the broader uh, city as well. Um, so I'm excited to support this. I thank my colleagues for supporting it. And I look forward to uh, this land sale and the subsequent planning for this project. That'll be a major shot in the arm, uh, not just for the 22nd Ward and Little Village, but for North Lawndale, Brighton Park, and so many other areas of our city. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak, Madam President and Mr. Chairman, thank you for your support. I move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number two is a substitute ordinance for the amendment of the Municipal Code Section 2-44-080, the 2015 Affordable Requirements, adding Section 2-44-058, 2021 Affordable Requirements, amending Section 2-44-090, Dash 090 Near North, Near West ARO Pilot Ordinance and Section 2 44 Milwaukee Corridor ARO Pilot Ordinance. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the, the Council, this ordinance is a rewrite of the Affordable Requirements Ordinance. It follows a year long task force on this very important issue that was made up of housing advocates, uh, housing developers, community leaders, and elected officials. This significant ordinance will lead to the creation of much needed affordable housing units across our city. It doubles from 10 to 20% the number of it, the, the percentage of ARO units required under uh, new developments seeking a zoning change. It creates mandates and incentivizes creation of new and increased subsidies and family size units, provides needed a flexibility to work with the Department of Housing on the creation of affordable units. It will lead to the centralization of leasing of these units. It'll also increase the amount of units that are built from 25 to 50%, while also making sure that we're keeping uh, in lieu of fees that go to other um, projects that create affordable housing around the city of Chicago. Um, the ARO ordinance and the ARO process does not solve all of our housing needs in the city of Chicago, but is a significant tool in the toolbox in this ordinance moves our city forward in a very positive direction. Madam Mayor, uh, I know that there are other aldermen who would like to speak on this ordinance and I reserve the right to close. All right, let's begin. The chair recognizes uh, Alderman Burnett. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, uh, Madam President, I'm sorry. Um, I'm honored to be one of the um, co-sponsors of this ordinance. Um, I, I wanna thank, um, the commissioner, I also want to thank you, Mayor. I'd like to commend uh, also the chairman for all of his work. Um, myself, Alderman uh, Osaman and, and Alderman Sitio Lopez sat on the committee. Uh, it was a very diverse committee with uh, people from the advocate group to developers, to bankers, to everyone. And this process didn't take, uh, didn't make everyone happy. But what it did, it, it compromised uh, everyone's concerns, but also at the same time pushed the ball forward in order to get more affordable housing throughout the city of Chicago. Of course, it increased from 10 to 20 percent um, for most areas throughout the city. Of course, my ward had 20 percent already, but uh, but I think it's good for the whole city. Uh, when I said I, I mentioned yesterday at the committee hearing that it integrated uh, communities. It had, the, it had the process of integrating communities with affordable housing. I wasn't thinking in terms of integration, in terms of race. I was thinking more of integration in terms of incomes uh, throughout the city of Chicago. 
Um, I think this is a great ordinance. It gives us some flexibility uh, to be able to not only get more affordable housing, but also to get uh, cash in order to sustain existing affordable housing uh, throughout the city of Chicago, but also give aldermen some compromise area, some leverage and room in order to be creative with the affordable housing. It also gives us an opportunity to uh, take uh, in some of our areas where everyone wants to build smaller units, that we can take some of this affordable housing and build houses on the west and the south side and in other communities with larger units uh, in our area. So Madam, Madam uh, President, I just wanna commend you I want to commend the commissioner. I want to commend everyone that's involved that have been involved in this process in order to get more affordable housing. I even want to commend uh, my colleagues who are trying to introduce a, a ordinance that would push for more affordable housing, uh, for which uh, I know that half of the people who was on our uh, task force would not agree with. <laughs> but uh, I think this is the best compromise that we can get at this time. And, and from what I said yesterday, we started this thing out years ago, and each time it gets better and better and better. And, and I want to tell you, Madam uh, President, this is better. This is much better. And I look forward to helping more people get affordable housing uh, throughout the city of Chicago. So I just want to say thank you, and I'm happy to have been involved, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on the task force and be a co-sponsor of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Burnett. The chair recognizes Alderman Irvin. Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, one thing that I, I really like about this particular ordinance is the fact that we now recognize that we have transitioning areas uh, in, our, in our city. Um, the old adage was to wait until everything had passed and then go back in and try to figure out how do we make the area affordable. Uh, the, the community I live in, East Garfield Park, I'm seeing homes in the last five years value triple, triple in a community where we have very little uh, rent stabilization or, or units that are, are rent controlled. So the points that have been brought forth by the commissioner, by the chairman uh, with this particular ordinance, I think will help those communities that are in transition to becoming the next big place, the next Wicker Park or, or Logan Square, where folks are totally priced out of that community that we're recognizing that we need to get in here now to do some work in order to preserve affordability in these transitioning communities. So I just want to thank the commissioner, thank the chairman, and also thank the mayor for their hard work in the committee on making this a reality. Because again, we cannot afford to wait until communities fully transition before we decide to step in and offer the rental and homeowner assistance that's so desperately needed to keep indigenous populations in their communities and not displace people. Thank you, Madam President. Recognizes Alderman Moore. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first of all, I wanna thank um, Commissioner Navarro for all of her hard work on this, as well as um, the chairman of the housing committee and you as well, Mayor. I echo all the sentiments and the words that um, Alderman Jason Irvin just said. Uh, without repeating all that, my main focal point of standing up is to, um, I remember being at CHA and, and when the Department of Housing um, was its own um, agency um, before we started doing ARO and in lieu of, um, we had funding and funding was there in some form, whether it was from corporations or somewhere um, for um, affordable housing. And then we start doing the ARO in the lieu of, it reminds me of the lottery for education. They said the lottery was gonna be on top of the money, but the lottery and everything replaced the money instead of being on top. And so we're here losing, we have to fund um, Department of Housing. We have to make sure wherever we were getting that money from before the in lieu of, this body has to find um, that money again and put into the Department of Housing um, so we can sustain um, affordable housing and, and run that department the way it's supposed to be um, ran. So um, um, it was a time, like I said, I repeat it again, before ARO and lieu of, there were some monies there for affordable housing. And lieu of shouldn't have been, should have, shouldn't have replaced it. It should have added to it. That has not happened. 
we in this body have to find a way to bring that money back. So um, that's, I, I support this ordinance, but I'm supporting it with the fact that uh, we already talked to the chairman that we will be pushing to make sure that we do that. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman Moore. The chair recognizes Alderman Sixto Lopez. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And um, first, let me thank uh, the Department of Housing. Let me thank uh, uh, the co-chairs, Alderman Burnett, Alderman Osterman, for your work. Um, all the task force members of the inclusionary task force for the incredible discussions that we had over the last year or so. Right now, as you know, the conditions, the living conditions as Alderman Irving had mentioned in many of our communities, black and brown communities in the south, southwest side and the west side are extremely dire. Right now, as we see developers paying cash for properties, as we see developers using questionable practices to push their agendas, to push the small homeowners who are struggling to get property. The city of Chicago and this council has a responsibility to create indeed a stability in our homes, a stability for our communities. We have gone a long way indeed to reach a compromise, but it's disappointing again that our real estate, real estate industry are developers who again get their way in a time where we're so close to reach an agreement, an agreement for the families of our communities, the communities most vulnerable and affected by this pandemic. When we discussed this in committee, it was very clear that the agreement was within reach. Our communities are not demanding a lot. What we are demanding and is within reach is to get more units for family size units in its developments. Yes, indeed, this ordinance does not address all the issues of housing, but certainly regulation has to be part of it. When we ask about family size units, and that has to be a specific percentage that is requested for these developments, is important because it creates affordability for the most vulnerable. When we ask the average medium income for, again, a percentage of the 20%, we ask that all families in our most vulnerable communities are included in these projects. And today in the city of Chicago, despite the rhetoric, that is not the case. We owe to the city of Chicago, we owe in a time of a crisis to do the, the due diligence. We were within reach of an agreement and consensus, but yet time after time, we led special interest groups to define the agenda, to define for us what's possible. And when we fail to do our due diligence and create legislation that creates regulation, true regulation to protect those small homeowners, to protect those vulnerable tenants, we're failing the people of Chicago. Again, the consensus is within reach and we fail to act. There are ways to do this ARO in a way that we've seen in other municipalities taking place with good practices, with courage, with integrity. But we're not gonna tell people that we have gone as far as we could or that we reach what's possible because what was possible was denied. Again, I wanna urge my colleagues today more than ever, despite the rhetoric, we don't see change in the city of Chicago. We see the same old, same old happening. I hope that in the council, we continue to have a conversation, but a conversation is based on consensus. Today in the city of Chicago, the special interest groups continue to put their agenda. And even today, when we ask for consensus, we're still waiting for bills that have coalition on supporting the communities, but not we are not able to get a vote here in the council. Today is the time for us to act with courage for the people who are suffering outside these walls to make sure that we do justice by our rhetoric with our legislation and our actions. We're still waiting today. 
after so many times for the empowering communities for public safety, which is a common sense bill. We cannot even have a vote, but we talk about consensus. Let's do justice by our communities. Let's do justice by the people who are suffering in all blocks, or small homeowners or tenants. Those are the people we represent, not the special interest groups. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Laspada. Thank you. Um, so uh, very uh, pleased to rise in favor of this ordinance today. As I shared in committee a couple of days ago uh, with Alderman Burnett, long before I was an alderman, we were marching and door knocking for any version of inclusionary housing in this city. And so this, I do believe, represents a remarkable step forward to get to 20% of a total uh, is a real achievement. And I appreciate that. Um, to see the step downs for percentage as you do a lower income averaging is so important, particularly in a city where still you need to work 60 hours a week at our minimum wage to affordable, affordable, afford affordable housing. So we're moving in the right direction there. Where I agree with my colleague, Alderman Sixto Lopez, the challenge is still around multi-bedroom housing. Um, throughout the time I've lived in Logan Square, what the ARO has consistently produced is studios and one bedrooms. And at a time when we are losing thousands of residents and hundreds of families, that hasn't worked. As long as we let the free market determine what housing gets produced, Working families are always going to get left out. And I know that there are improvements here in terms of multi bedroom units for offsite, encouraging new multi bedroom within those buildings by letting you count two studios, for an example, as a two bedroom. We have work to do, um, but I trust that the Department of Housing is up for that challenge. I trust Commissioner Navarra on this. I trust our unsung policy deputy commissioner, uh, Daniel Hertz, that we're going to find the right incentives and path forward to compel, mandate, incentivize developers to do more multi-bedroom affordable housing. This is one tool in the toolbox, but I think it is a far upgraded tool than what we're currently working with. And so glad to vote in support today. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, the chair recognizes um, Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Thank you so much, uh, Madam President. Uh, I too rise uh, in support of this ordinance today. Uh, I agree um, with uh, housing advocates, uh, with my colleague, Alderman Sixto Lopez, uh, in noting that we must do more to address the affordable housing crisis in our communities, to stop the displacement, and to reverse the ugly history and current present of a segregated Chicago. We need communities that are integrated and diverse. Um, I'm supporting this ordinance today because for so many years, myself and other housing advocates on the Northwest side of Chicago have been calling for a minimum of 20% affordability when we have uh, more dense developments that receive a zoning change. And we receive that 20% in this ordinance. So I wanna uh, commend uh, Commissioner Navarro. I wanna commend uh, the, the policy director, Daniel Hertz, uh, your entire team, Madam President, who have been working diligently uh, to bring folks together uh, to get us to this ordinance that we are voting on today. Um, there's more that we have to do, and we have to do more around getting uh, family size units. We know uh, that, you know, for certain developments, that 20% really should be uh, the floor. It should not be the ceiling, um, particularly when other subsidies uh, and other programs are involved. Um, but we also know that increasing the uh, inclusionary zoning uh, to 20% in gentrified neighborhoods like Logan Square and other neighborhoods that I represent on the Northwest side uh, is just one part of the whole host of solutions uh, and policies that we need to pursue to ensure that we have communities that are integrated and diverse. So this is not uh, the final step. This is an important step forward. And I look forward to continuing to work with the uh, Department of Housing, with housing advocates, to make sure that we're doing more uh, to get additional affordability and to get those family size units and to get steeper affordability mm -hmm. that our families deserve. Um, 
but I'm voting yes uh, in support of this today uh, because Logan Square Neighborhood Association supports us. They've been working on this. Uh, and I think that this is an important first step uh, towards ensuring that we have affordability uh, and integrated communities. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Maldonado. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also rise in support of this ordinance and this amendment. And um, I think that we should understand that the solution to the affordable housing crisis that we have in our city, uh, we will never resolve that challenge, that problem comprehensively. The only way to tackle and to resolve this problem is incrementally. I support this amendment because there is a provision that for the first time it would allow for the, for the uh, in lieu, uh, the, for the fees to be exported into gentrifying communities, just like the 26th Ward. For many years since the inception of the ARO, the, 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 the fees were restricted to be reinvested within a two miles radius. This amendment allows for those fees to be exported into other areas, especially giving priorities to gentrifying areas, just like the 26th Ward. And I know that there will be never, we're never gonna see an ordinance coming before this body in which we all can go to a, on a kumbaya and say, we got everything that all of us different interests wanted. But to the extent that we all get what we think is important for our, for our own respective wards, to me, that is what it is important. And because of that, we were able to achieve something that would benefit the massive number of families that are being chased out of the 26th ward every year and every month. And with the possibility of being able to stay because we might be able to increase the production of affordable housing to help those working families to stay in the 26th ward. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman King. Thank you, um, Madam President. Uh, thank you uh, also for your leadership here. I too want to lend my support for this ordinance. Um, as my colleague uh, Alderman Burnett said it earlier, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a, a strong step in the uh, right direction. Um, affordable housing is the responsibility of the entire city, not just a few segregated uh, areas. Uh, when uh, Commissioner Navarro uh, first stepped into this position, I challenged her on this and asked her, you know, what are you going to do um, about affordable housing and the city's responsibility to affordable housing? I'd like to commend her um, and her team uh, for stepping up uh, and working under um, Chairman Osterman's uh, leadership uh, Vice Chair Burnett's leadership uh, working together. I'd also like to commend uh, my colleagues, um, Alderman uh, Cicho Lopez and others um, and advocates for pushing the envelope, for, for uh, forcing us uh, to have this conversation. Um, again, it's not perfect, uh, but we are definitely heading in the right direction. Um, and so I just wanna commend uh, everybody for coming together and uh, heading in the right direction to bring affordability uh, to uh, neighborhoods that haven't traditionally had them um, and strategically so. And so, as I always say, you know, we have to be strategic about our equity because um, it, was, it didn't just happen. Uh, by happenstance. So uh, thank you to everybody uh, for coming together on affordable housing here. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman King. The chair recognizes Alderman Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I too rise uh, to support this endeavor. First, I'd, I'd like to um, congratulate uh, Commissioner Novara and her staff, Daniel Hertz and Ricardo Lopez and others uh, for their significant amount of work on this and communication on this um, major piece of legislation. Um, I'd agree with Alderman Haddon and Alderman Sichko Lopez that, um, you know, we've got a ways to go. 
and um, the family size uh, issue is a major one. Um, I will say that I was happy to hear um, that there's a commitment around um, looking at preservation areas. Um, I know that in code, it's every three to five years, but we have a commitment now that was public in the committee on uh, looking at the Pilsen Little Village um, um, pilot in two years as that expires uh, to, to look at the data on preservation. That really moved me in, in ways on this ordinance, but you know, it also moved me in the same way that it moved Alderman La Spada. Being someone who's uh, worked on this issue, been cognizant of this issue for, for many years, you know, there's a lot of good here. And um, we, you know, spreading affordable housing throughout the city um, and so many other things that have been mentioned so far um, have, have certainly earned my vote on this initiative, but it's also um, earned my interest in continue to push. So I, I join my colleagues and continue to do so. Uh, and last but certainly not least, I wanted to congratulate Alder, Alderman uh, Sichko Lopez, uh, Vice Chair Burnett and Chairman Osterman for all their work on this. Um, and I look forward to continue to work on this and other measures to create more affordability here in our city. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Alderman Rodriguez. Chairman Osterman, I believe the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I greatly appreciate all the comments from the Alderman uh, who made their remarks today. I think those comments reflect a broad consensus on this ordinance. Um, housing and affordable housing in our city is one of our top priorities, especially given the pandemic that we are coming out of and will be coming out of in housing insecurity. This is one significant tool in the toolbox that will help us. We have to do much more. We have to create more housing on the south and west side of the city of Chicago. But this ordinance before us today is gonna to create more affordable units in our city, allow people to live in their communities that they grew up in. It's also gonna have more family units, offsite units in this ordinance are gonna be required to be two bedroom or bigger. And there's incentives to work with the Department of Housing and Commissioner Navarra to have more family units. That's something I strongly support and agree with. Um, I also want to commend those who push the envelope on this to push to get more. We have much more work to do, but let's be very clear. There's a significant amount of work by a lot of people that went in today's ordinance. Today's ordinance will create more affordable units for Chicagoans. And I ask for your support on this ordinance and move for passage of this ordinance. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman La Spada. Aye. Alderman La Spada is an aye. Alderman Hopkins. No. Alderman Hopkins is a no. Alderman Dow. Aye. Alderman Dow is an aye. Alderman King. Aye. Alderman King is an aye. Alderman Harrison. Aye. Alderman Harrison is an aye. Alderman Sawyer. Aye. Alderman Sawyer is an aye. Alderman Mitchell. Aye. Alderman Mitchell. Aye. Alderman Mitchell is an aye. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Harris is an aye. Alderman Beal. Yep. Alderman Beal is an aye. Alderman Zalaski Garza. Aye. Alderman Zalaski Garza is an aye. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Thompson is an aye. Alderman Cardness. Aye. Alderman Cardness is an aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Quinn is an aye. Alderman Burke. Alderman Burke is an aye. Alderman Lopez. Aye. Alderman Lopez is an aye. Alderman Coleman. Aye. Alderman Coleman is an aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Moore is an aye. Alderman Curtis. Aye. Alderman Curtis is an aye. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman O'Shea is an aye. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Taylor is a no. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Alderman Brookins is an aye. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez is an aye. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Tavares is an aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Scott is an aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Oh. Alderman Cicho Lopez is a no. Alderman Maldonado. Aye. Alderman Maldonado is an aye. Alderman Burnett. Aye. Alderman Burnett is an aye. Alderman Irvin. Aye. Alderman Irvin aye. is an aye. Alderman Talaferro. Aye. Alderman Talaferro is an aye. 
Alderman Raboyes. Aye. Alderman Raboyes is an aye. Alderman Cardona. Aye. Alderman Cardona is an aye. Alderman Wagaspack. Aye. Alderman Wagaspack is an aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. No. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez is a no. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Austin is an aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa is an aye. Alderman Vegas. Aye. Alderman Vegas is an aye. Alderman Mitz. Aye. Alderman Mitz is an aye. Alderman Spasado. Nick Spasado is a no. Alderman Spasado is a no. Alderman Nugent. Aye. Alderman Nugent is an aye. Alderman Vasquez. Aye. Alderman Vasquez is an aye. Alderman Napolitano. No. Alderman Napolitano is a no. Alderman Riley. No. Alderman Riley is a no. Alderman Smith. Aye. Alderman Smith is an aye. Alderman Tunney. Aye. Alderman Tunney is an aye. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Gardner is an aye. Alderman Kappelman. Aye. Alderman Kappelman is an aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Martin is an aye. Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Osterman is an aye. Alderman Haddon. No. Alderman Haddon is a no. Alderman Silverstein. Aye. Alderman Silverstein is an aye. Lady, the, ladies and gentlemen, there are 42 yeas and eight nays. The motion passes. Madam President. Mr. Thompson on a motion for reconsideration. Motion to reconsider the vote. All those in favor of reconsidering, uh, all those in favor of the motion for reconsideration, signify by saying aye. All those opposed say nay. No. Nope. The nays have it. The motion for reconsideration fails. Chairman Host Osterman. To the municipal code section 2-157-030 to modify the definition of qualifying property owner with within large lot programs. I make the, um, like to move the passage of this favorable roll call, first favorable roll call, the Committee on Finance, and a associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Very no objection, so ordered. Madam President, this concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Osterman. Next up, the Committee on License and Consumer Protection, Chairman Mitz. Thank you, Mayor. Madam President, members of the City Council, I'm reporting for the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. We held a virtual meeting on April the 14th, 2021, and the following items were passed by the committee. R2021-388, a substitute resolution calling for approval of Stone Peak Associates for LLC acquisition of RCN Chicago as a subsidiary condition on a corporate guarantee to continue license operation for city area one and area two as cable television and communication service provider. Mayor Lifford and the commissioner of business affairs and consumer protection I move that the city council concur in the recommendations of the license committee and pass this item by the same roll call vote as item number one of the committee on finance and the same unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item 20201-1166 an ordinance prohibiting various cannabis related establishment in a designated precinct of the second ward. I move passes of this item by the same motion if there is no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Two ordinances regarding moratoriums in the 24th and the 42nd ward. I move passes of these items by the same motion, if there is no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. That concludes my report, uh, Madam President of the License Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Mitz. Next up, Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, Chairman Burnett.
Thank you, Madam President. Reporting for your Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, for which a meeting was held virtual on Thursday, April 15, 2021. Before the committee, there were 172 items. There were 172 routine items that passed and zero routine items that did not pass. If there is no objection, I move for the passage of these ordinances in the omnibus. That concludes my report. Thank you. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Next up, the uh, Committee on Public Safety, Chairman Taliaferro. President and members of City Council reporting for the Committee on Public Safety, for which a meeting was held April 16, 2021. There were two items before the committee for which votes were taken. Item number one is the substitute ordinance 2021-363, an amendment of the Municipal Code Title II and 9 by modifying various sections and adding new section 9-1-120 regarding fines and penalties for unlawful use of non-highway vehicles. Item number two was a substitute ordinance 2020-5709, an amendment to the Municipal Code Section 8 dash four dash zero eight five to include immigration or citizenship status or gender identity as protected class under the hate crime legislation. These items were recommended uh, do pass by the committee. If there's no objections, Madam President, I moved for the passage of both items by the first favorable roll call vote in the committee on finance and the un associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Talon Farrell. Next up, Committee on Special Events, Cultural Affairs, and Recreation. Chairman Spizzato. Thank you, Madam President, members of the City Council. Uh, before I give my report, I would just like to say one thing. I might be a little inappropriate, but I just want to thank all the people who worked so hard to get us back here today. Um, I think it's a first step in opening up the city. So thank you, everybody. Um, so with that, With that, Madam President and members of the council, reporting for your committee on special events, cultural affairs and recreation, for which I call the Happy Committee. A uh, virtual meeting was held on April 8th, 2021. The committee recommends passage of the following item, number one, A2021-29, appointment of Brooke Flanagan as member of the Advisory Council on Cultural Affairs and Special Events. I move passage of this item by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item two, 2021-1192, an amendment of the Municipal Code Section 1010-8-330 by re redefining traditional parade as continuous five-year event excluding years 20 20 and 2021 from the aggregate. I move passage of this item by the same motion if, if there are no objections. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Thank you, Madam President. This concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Spazzato. Next up, Committee on Transportation and Public Way, Chairman Brooken. Good morning, Your Honor. Reporting on your Committee on Transportation and Public Way, a meeting which was held on April 19th, 2021. The following ordinances were passed by a majority of the members present. Uh, item number one, page one, includes an appointment of Erica Rodriguez as a member of the Illinois International Port District Board. Uh, item number two, on page two through page 18, includes 189 ordinances for grants of privileges introduced by the local alderman from wards one through Three, five, six, eight, eleven, twelve, fifteen through seventeen, twenty-one through thirty-three, thirty-five through thirty-eight, and forty-one through fifty. Item number three, uh, pages nineteen and twenty include twenty-one ordinances for canopies introduced by the local alderman from wards one. I'm sorry, from wards five, twenty-three, twenty-seven, forty-two. 44, 45, 47, and 48. Item number four, uh, pages 21 and 22 include two amendments and seven ordinances for miscellaneous items introduced by local aldermen from wards one through three, 12, 14 through 16, 22, 33, and 36. Uh, with respect to uh, 
the item that includes post-construction uh, uh, restoration, Alderman Lopez would like to speak on this issue. The chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. Thank you and good, good morning colleagues. Good morning, Madam President. I rise in support of this ordinance calling for a universal standard for restoration. And I wanted to rise in particular to say thank you to you, Madam President, and to your law department and to your team for working with me on this item. I believe we have to thank people when we work together. And I wanted to make it a point of being known that we're able to do this today to ensure that when projects are done in the city of Chicago, it doesn't matter what neighborhood you're in, it will always be finished in the same manner. It is something that has been brought to our attention numerous times in my ward. And I think it's something that we can all agree on should be the standard and with everyone's support today will be the standard. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman. Chairman Brooken. Thank you, um, Madam President. Uh, page on item number five, page 23 includes one resolution ordinance located in the 27th ward. Uh, item number six, page 24, includes two resubdivision ordinances located in the 11th and 25th wards. Uh, Madam President, if there are no objections, I move passage of these items by the last most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I want to commend Alderman Lopez for a job well done, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Brookins. Next up, the Committee on Workforce Development. Chairman Sidlaski Garza. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. Um, it's great to see you guys back here today. Um, I feel like it's the first day of school. Um, reporting for your committee on workforce development, which held a meeting on April 13th, 2021, there was one item on the agenda, substitute ordinance 2021-1219, establishment of COVID-19 vaccination rights for workers and prohibition of retaliation by employers. SO 2021-1219 was passed unanimously by a majority voice vote. Hearing no objection, I move for the first most favorable vote on the committee on, on the finance report and the corresponding unsuccess, unsuccessful motion to reconsider. In addition, the Committee on Workforce Development also held a meeting on April 15, 2021. There was one item on the agenda, R2021-392. Chairman Garza, if I may, let's, let's uh, proceed on the first item and then we can move to the second. Sure thing. All right, there's a motion, uh, no objection, so ordered. Okay, thank you. The second item, the Committee on Workforce Development also held a meeting on April 15th, 2021. There was one item on the agenda, R2021-392, call, a call for the Illinois General Assembly to place workers' rights amendment on the ballot on November 8th 2022 Illinois general election. R2021-392 was passed unanimously by majority voice vote. Hearing no objection, I move for the first most favorable vote on the committee on the finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you, Madam President. This concludes the report on committee on workforce development. Thank you, uh, Chairman Garza. Next up, the uh, Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, Chairman Tunney. Madam President and members of the City Council, presenting a series of reports for your Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, which held a meeting on April 20th, 2021. These reports are grouped for convenience. The following items were passed by the majority of members present. Page one contains a text amendment of Municipal Code Section 17-7-0453 by striking the prohibition of residential uses in the Kinsey Corridor Overlay District. I move passage of this item by the last most favorable roll call vote of the Finance Committee and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. 
Page one contains a text amendment of municipal code titles one, two, four, and 14A regarding the building code scofflaw list and associated restrictions. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page one contains a text amendment of municipal code chapters 17-2, 17 17-9, and 17-17 regarding open space, side setbacks for accessory buildings and allowable feature encroachments of additional dwelling units called ADUs in residential zoning districts. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there is no objection. The chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. <laughs> Don't worry. The other handsome one, thank you. <laughs> Madam, Madam President, I just wish to be recorded no on this item. Thank you. Reflected. Uh, with that exception, uh, Chairman. All right. With that, uh, uh, no vote uh, noted, uh, hearing no other objections, so ordered. Page one contains a correction to ordinance 02020-6207, providing protection to Pilsen neighborhood residents against economically driven displacement. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Page one contains a correction to ordinance uh, 02020-4556, an ordinance changing PMD to planned manufacturing district to business plan development for the property generally located at 1020 North Elston Avenue. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page one contains the mayoral appointments of Ann McDonald and Vashili Rowe as alternate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page one contains, or one through nine, contains various map amendments in the 50th, 47th, 46th, 40th, 39th, 38th, 29th, 27th, 25th, 21st, 20th, 12th, 10th, 2nd, and 1st wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page nine contains the historical landmark designation of the Miracle House located at 2001 North Nordica. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page nine contains a demolition order for a non-contributing building in the 27th Ward Fulton Randolph Market Landmark District located at 1020 West Randolph Street. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page nine contains three fee waivers for historical landmarks located in the first, second, and 43rd wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page 10 contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade in the fourth, 12th, 18th, 25th, 27th, 31st, and 43rd wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. And Madam President, that concludes my first report. And then on my second report is uh, Madam President and members of the City Council presenting a report for your Committee on Zoning Landmarks and Building Standards, which held a meeting on February 23rd, 2021. The following item was passed by a majority of the members present. And page one contains a zoning map amendment document number 0202. 20-2990 for the address commonly known as 4758 through 4760 North Milwaukee Avenue. At this time, I wanna uh, make a motion to hold this in committee for further consideration um, and for a date certain at our next meeting that we will have an up-down vote on this. And Madam President, that concludes my report. Chair recognizes Alderman Gardner. Yes, I'm just asking for a roll call vote on this. On the on the on the motion, or you're asking for a roll call vote on the motion to hold the matter in committee? No, no, I want I want to vote on it today. There's a motion that's pending to hold the matter in committee. I'm happy that's procedurally where we are. Um, so we'd have to have a, a motion, a vote on that. Madam Clerk, call the roll. 
to hold this item in committee, correct? correct. Let me. Roll. There's a there, the there's a motion to hold the matter uh, in committee. Sir, I, I please. Let's make sure we follow the procedure. There's a motion pending by the chairman of the committee to hold the matter in the committee. We're going to have a roll call vote on that matter. Madam President. The chair recognizes uh, Chairman Tunney. Right. I would just, for the members here and the members that are uh, on video conferencing, is literally to hold it for one month. And we would have a date certain at our next council meeting on this. It's not to hold it because obviously the pr uh, proponent or the sponsor of that has been waiting. And it's our effort that we can get this across the finish line at our next vote, at our next city council meeting. So as I understand and there's a it, lot more discussion that needs to happen, and that's why I'm holding it. So as I understand it, there'll be an up and down vote one way or the other at next uh, next month right. to tee it up for city right. council. And then I would urge my councils to get uh, my council members to give me that uh, courtesy to work on this for the next month. All right. So there's a pending motion uh, asking for a roll call vote. Let's have. I believe that under the circumstances, we need a roll call vote, so. <clears throat> particularly since the sponsor is challenging. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the chair recognizes um, Alderman Napolitano. Madam President, I bought my. And, I, and the, the only matter pending right now That's it. is a motion to hold in committee. Yep, yeah. could you just give a, um, a little bit of a information on, on which way our vote is going, if we're voting no for it to be held or? So a yes vote would be to hold to. Uh, defer to Chairman Tunney and hold the matter in committee. A no vote um, is to not hold the matter in committee. The, the chair recognizes Alderman Dow. Thank you, Madam President. I, I'm just trying to understand who, what Alderman, uh, which one of my colleagues objected or wanted to have the vote. I didn't hear the name. Or whoever the sponsor is of the ordinance. So, the, so just again to clarify, Chairman Tunney has asked for the matter to be held in committee uh, on the condition that it will have a date certain vote uh, on the floor of council. He's asking for a one month um, delay. I, 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 understood, I understood that, Madam President. I'm trying to just see who the but if I could colleague Dowell, was that called for something different. If I, if I could, Chairman Dowell, I will explain. All right. Uh, Alderman Gardner, who's the sponsor, has an objection. The way to deal with that, given that there's a pending motion, is for a vote. That's why we're proceeding. Chairman, right. uh, Chair recognizes uh, Chairman Oster. So uh, to the motion, um, I guess to my colleague, Alderman Gardner, we un understand the urgency that you want to have this enacted. I think that Chairman um, Tunney, has expressed that this matter will be voted on um, in the next 30 days. And I think um, he's worked on this and I think he has pledged today to work with you on this. So I guess I would just ask if you wanted to withdraw the motion or do we wanna go through the roll call? Because I think um, the chairman has expressed that he will definitely call this for an up or down vote um, within the next 30 days. I don't know if you wanna speak to the motion. The chair, the chair recognizes Alderman Gardner to have a vote so we will have a roll call vote on the motion to hold the matter in committee um, in deference to um, chairman tunney uh, for a future vote by this body um, at the next city council meeting if a yes vote is to hold the matter in committee with that those caveats and no vote um, is to defeat the motion to hold in committee all right madam clerk please call the roll Alderman Laspada. Aye. Alderman Laspada is a yes. Alderman Hopkins. No. Alderman Hopkins is a no. Alderman Dow. Yes. Alderman Dow is a yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman King is a yes. Alderman Harrison. 
Yes. Alderman Harrison is a yes. Alderman Sawyer. Aye. Alderman Sawyer is a aye. Alderman Mitchell. Yes. Alderman Mitchell is a aye. Alderman Harris. Yes. Alderman Harris is an aye. Alderman Beal. No. Alderman Beal is a no. Alderman Zlowski Garza. No. Alderman Zlowski Garza is a no. Alderman Thompson. No. Alderman Thompson is a no. Alderman Cardenas. Yes. Alderman Cardenas is a yes. Alderman Quinn. No. Alderman Quinn is a no. Alderman Burke. No. Alderman Burke is a no. Alderman Lopez. Nope. Alderman Lopez is a no. Alderman Coleman. Yes. Alderman Coleman is a yes. Alderman Moore. No. Alderman Moore is a no. Alderman Curtis. Alderman Curtis. No. Alderman Curtis is a no. Alderman O'Shea. No. Alderman O'Shea is a no. Alderman Taylor. Yes. Alderman Taylor is a yes. Alderman Brookins. Yes. Alderman Brookins is a yes. Alderman Rodriguez. No. Alderman Rodriguez is a no. Alderman Tabaras. No. Alderman Tabaras is a no. Alderman Scott. Yes. Alderman Scott is a yes. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Alderman Cicho Lopez is a no. Alderman Maldonado. No. Alderman Maldonado is a no. Alderman Burnett. Yes. Alderman Burnett is a yes. Alderman Irvin. Yes. Alderman Irvin is a yes. Alderman Talaferro. Yes. Alderman Talaferro is a yes. Alderman Raboyas. No. Alderman Raboyas is a no. Alderman Cardona. <laughs> Alderman Cardona is a no. Alderman Waggis Pack. Alderman Waggis Pack is a no. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Yes. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez is a yes. Alderman Austin. Yes. Alderman Austin is a yes. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Yes. Alderman, Alderman Ramirez Rosa is a yes. Alderman Viegas. No. Alderman Viegas is a no. Alderman Mitz. Yes. Alderman Mitz is a yes. Alderman Spasado. Nick Spasado is a no. Alderman Spasado is a no. Alderman Nugent. No. Alderman Nugent is a no. Alderman Vasquez. Yes. Alderman Vasquez is a yes. Alderman Napolitano. No. Alderman Napolitano is a no. Alderman Riley. No. Alderman Riley is a no. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Smith is a yes. Alderman Tunney. Yes. Alderman Tunney is a yes. Alderman Gardner. No. Alderman Gardner is a no. Alderman Kappelman. Yes. Alderman Kappelman is a yes. Alderman Martin. Yes. Alderman Martin is a yes. Alderman Osterman. Yes. Alderman Osterman is a yes. Alderman Haddon. Yes. Alderman Haddon is a yes. Alderman Silverstein. No. Alderman Silverstein is a no. And the vote is uh, 26 to 24. The motion is granted. Um, Alderman Cardenas on the motion for reconsideration. Alderman Cardenas on the motion for reconsideration. Madam President, I'd like to reconsider the motion. All those in favor of reconsidering the uh, uh, previous vote, uh, signify by saying aye. aye. All those in favor, uh, all those opposed? No, 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 yeah, no, the no, no's no. have it. The motion for reconsideration is defeated. Chairman Tunney. Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Tunney. Alderman uh, Wagesback, Chairman Wagesback on the Joint Committee on the Budget and Government Operations and Finance. Thank you, Madam President. Reporting for the Joint Committee on Finance and Budget and Government Operations, which met on Monday, April 19, 2021 at 9 a.m. Item number one is a re-referral of a proposed ordinance amending the municipal code by adding new chapter 3-10 to the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. The re-referral was approved by the committee by a voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes the report of the Joint Committee of Finance and Budget and Government Operations. Thank you. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the agreed calendar. Um, matters on the agreed calendar, Chair, uh, Chairman Harris. Madam President, um, I received from Clerk Andrea M. Valencia a total of 91 items proposed for the agreed calendar consisting of congratulatory, commemorative, 
tributary resolutions from Mayor Lori Lightfoot and the following aldermen, Alderman Laspada, Alderman Dow, Alderman King, Alderman Harris, Alderman Thomas, Alderman Burke, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Raboris, Alderman Villegas, Alderman Nugent, I request that they be approved in the omnibus. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Uh, Madam Clerk, before we move on to new business, I believe that you have a correction uh, to a committee referral on a mayoral introduction uh, addressing a neighborhood opportunity fund RDA for South Oakley Venture. Uh, that item should go to the budget committee. Would you uh, like to make that correction? Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of Neighborhood Opportunity Fund Redevelopment Agreement with South Oakley Venture LLC. For favorable consideration, this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Light, for Mayor. And this is referred to the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, new business. Uh, the clerk will call the rolls uh, beginning with the first. Peter. Claims, free permits, licensee exemptions, which are referred to the Committee on Finance. Zoning amendments, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Traffic regulations, traffic control signals, and traffic signs, which are referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Grants of privilege on and over the public way, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. An exemption from physical barrier requirement for commercial driveway alley access for parking facilities, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Laspada has a proposed resolution to call for hearings on fair housing reform, which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alderman Dowell has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Uli Lander YOLO 150 Seals Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Dowell also has a proposed order for the issuance of a permit for signed signboards at 2105 South State Street which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alderman King has a proposed ordinance for amendment of Municipal Code Chapter 9-68 by adding a new Section 9-68-032 to establish seasonal parking program on the west side of the 4,000 block of South Oakenwald Avenue from East 40th Street to East 41st Street, which is referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Alman King also has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Philip Jackson Parkway, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Sawyer has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 2-92-330 to regulate enforcement of percentages of socioeconomically disadvantaged areas, residents, work hours for construction contracts valued at $100,000 or more, which is referred to the Committee on Contracting Oversight and Equity. Alman Sidlowski Garza and Alderman Lopez have a proposed resolution to call for hearings to publicize resources available in Chicago to help employers, workers, and labor and trade organizations with reopening of businesses, which is referred to the Committee on Workforce Development. Alman Thompson has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Cardenas has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, chapter 9-12, by adding a new section 9-12-105 regarding offenses related to reckless driving events, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Alman Cardenas also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapters 9-4 and 9-12 by modifying various sections and adding new section 9-12-110. Uh, so as soon as he mentions it, I just, I... To further regulate drag Our racing Senate and drifting rule. of public and private properties, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Alman Brookins has proposed ordinances for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portions of West 87th Street. Referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Two committees having been called, the Committee on License and the Committee on Zoning. The matters referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alman Brookins has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Deacon Clarence L. Schaefer Senior Drive, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Rodriguez has a proposed resolution for a tribute to the late Adam Toledo and commitment for preventing future tragedies by empowering and uplifting young people of color, which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. Madam President.
wishes to be recognized? Alderman Rodriguez. Alderman Rodriguez. Oh, sorry. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Rodriguez. Yes, I'd like to briefly uh, move to suspend the rules to speak on this resolution. Um, Alderman Rodriguez, uh, ordinarily, this is just simply referring ordinary matters to a committee. This is not really the proper place uh, to speak to this. You can certainly speak to it um, during the committee process. I understand, Madam President, given the recency and the tragic nature of this uh, occurrence, I just wanted to briefly speak to this resolution. It'll be under a minute. Uh, there's a, a, a motion to suspend hearing objection uh, briefly, Alderman Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and I'll just read from the resolution. I just wanna raise up the situation as one that's internationally been recognized. Uh, and whereas in the early morning hours of March 29, 2021, a tragedy occurred by any measure in the Little Village community where Adam Toledo, a 13 year old was shot and killed by a Chicago police officer. Adam was born on May 26, 2007, and he was a seventh grader at Gary Elementary School in Little Village and was described by those who knew him as a great friend a kind and funny kid, and a sweet, loving boy. And like every kid, Adam had many dreams for his future, including wanting to grow up to be a police officer or a celebrity YouTuber, dreams that will never be realized due to his tragic death. Words cannot express the grief and sorrow we feel as we remember Adam's life and mourn his tragic death. As a city, we need time to grieve, to mourn, and to heal together. But we also need to reimagine, reinvent, and re reform the societal factors and pressures that led to losing one of our sons far too soon. We need to do the work for Adam and for all of our brown and black boys to reform our police department and commit to substantive sustained investments in our communities to create real futures for young people of color across our city. And lastly, while we rightly demand accountability for Adam's death through an open, transparent, just and expedient investigation we also want everyone to remember and celebrate Adam's life as a son, a brother, a student, a neighbor, a friend, and a 13-year-old child whose life was taken much too soon. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman uh, Rodriguez. And I will say on behalf of uh, City Council, we all need to pray uh, for the Toledo family and to continue um, giving them support. The chair recognizes Alderman Sigcho Lopez, but folks, we're not gonna start a precedent here of speaking on matters that are simply being introduced. So Alderman uh, Sigcho Lopez, I will give you a brief moment to speak. Brief, sir. Yes, and I, and I won't take long. I think Alderman Rodriguez has already mentioned the urgency of the situation of hearts of the family of Adam Toledo. It's been a real difficult time in our community. And what our community demands and deserve is more than prayers and platitude, but action, Mayor Lightfoot. We have a bill right now, and you know this very well. We have the Empowerment Committee for Public Safety. We sir, need to pass it. Sir, you, Mayor are, you, are, you are now out of order. I'm gonna you are it. now out of order. You are out of order. Mr. Clark, please move on. Mr. Clark. Let's go. Alderman Telefiero has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 17-12 and 17-17 to further- Sir, please, out of respect for the chamber, lower your voices. We are proceeding with business. Go ahead, Peter. Alderman Telefiero has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapters 17-12 and 17-17 to further regulate city digital signs and expansion of city digital sign network, which is referred to a joint committee comprised of the members of the committee on the budget and government operations and the members of the committee on zoning, landmarks and building standards. Alderman Waggis Pack has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 8 or 4-8 by adding a new section 4-8-300 to regulate third-party food delivery service fees, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Rodriguez Sanchez and others have a proposed resolution to call for Mayor Lori E. Lightfoot to present spending plan for allocation of American Rescue Act funds towards services for immediate needs of communities hardest hit by COVID-19 pandemic. 
which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Alderman Austin has a proposed ordinance for transfer of funds for Committee on Contracting Oversight and Equity for the year 2021, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Alderman Villegas has a proposed ordinance for amendment of form of certified service provider license agreement adopted by the City Council on September 6, 2017, which is referred to the Committee on Workforce Development. Alderman Villegas also... I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Alderman Villegas also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 4-288 to further regulate requirements for crane operators, which is referred send, to- Mr. Mr. Clerk, I'd like to send the previous matter to rules. On the matter regarding- Zero. Alderman... Sir, who's, who's the alderman that's speaking, please? Uh, alderman right. Reboyers. Sorry, sir, you have to, Alder, Alderman Reboyos, or anybody else who wishes uh, to make a referral during this time period, you must raise your hand. Use the raise your hand function um, if you're uh, remote or otherwise stand and raise your hand, please. <clears throat> Alderman Villegas has proposed orders for amendment of form of certified service provider license agreement adopted by city council on September 6, 2017. Two committees having been called, the Committee on Workforce Development and the Committee on Rules. The matter is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alman Villegas also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, chapter 4-288, to further regulate requirements for crane operators, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Two committees having been called, the matter is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alman Villegas also has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code title one by adding a new chapter 1-26 entitled Chicago COVID-19 program for relief ordinance, which is referred to the committee on the budget and government operations. Okay. Two committees having been called, the matters referred to the committee on committees and rules. Alman Villegas also has the proposed resolution to call for hearings on Navy Pier Incorporated's lack of transparency relating to MBE, WBE contracting, and use of City of Chicago funds and introduction of annual economic impact filing requirement, which is referred to the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. Alman Spazzato has the proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Harold Bone CPD Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Riley has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-32 by adding a new section 2-32-081 to allow businesses licensed under title four to request annual consolidation bills for estimated fees for certain permits, inspections, and signs, which is referred to the committee on finance. Alman Riley also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-32 by adding a new section 2-32-081 to require the city controller to issue annual consolidated bills to businesses licensed under title four for certain permits, inspections, and signs, which is referred to the committee on finance. Alman Riley also has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Jack Rosenberg Way, which is referred to the committee on transportation and public way and a proposed ordinance for transfer of funds within the City Council Legislative Reference Bureau for the year 2021, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Alman Smith has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, chapter 17-2, by adding a new section 17-2-0304E regarding floor area ratio increase for preservation of orange and red coated buildings, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks and Building Standards. Alman Tunney has a proposed ordinance for a one-time exception allowing Chicago Cubs to hold Major League Baseball game at Wrigley Field on June 18th, 2021 at 7.05 p.m., which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. And Alderman Gardner has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of North Milwaukee Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Your Honor, that concludes the automatic introductions. <clears throat> Thank you, Peter. Next up, approval of the journal, Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I'm not aware of any corrections to the journal and move that it be approved by the affirmative vote of all the members present for the roll call to determine quorum. There are no objections, so ordered. Next up, unfinished business, Alderman Mitchell. 
Madam President, I am aware of one item of unfinished business uh, that is noticed pursuant to Rule 41. It is an ordinance to prohibit booting of motor vehicles on private property within the first ward. I defer to Alderman Laspada. Chair recognizes Alderman Laspada. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is an ordinance that passed through the license committee last month. Again, this is having the first ward join many other wards that don't allow private booting in them based off of many conversations and feedback with my residents, many attempts for reform with the operator. It was a, a difficult decision, but I believe it is the right decision. Uh, very much appreciated the favorable consideration and passage through the license committee. And in the interim, I did uh, have an opportunity to speak with those who sent it to uh, defer and publish last time. The concern was how quickly the ordinance was going to go into effect. And to be clear from talking to BACP, it is 30 days until this ordinance goes into effect. It does give the business time to um, make preparations for however they choose to uh, help them find, help their staff find other positions. So I, I believe I've worked out the differences with those who sent it to defer and publish. And if possible, I would encourage this ordinance to be passed by the first most favorable roll call vote. Alderman Lespada, just a point of clarification. Are you asking that this matter be uh, approved uh, by um, the same most favorable vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated um, unsuccessful motion for reconsideration? Yes, thank you very much for the clarification. Yes, please. All right, hearing no objection, so ordered. Alderman Mitchell, is there any other unfinished business? Uh, Madam President, I'm not aware of any other unfinished business. And next up, miscellaneous business. Uh, Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I am aware that Rule 41 notice seeking to discharge several items from committee was filed with the clerk, but I am informed that these have all been resolved, making sure accordingly. So if that, if that is the case, I'm aware of no miscellaneous business. Alderman Mitchell, the date and time of the next meeting? I provided an ordinance to the clerk setting the date and time for the next meeting of the city council for Wednesday, May 26, 2021 at 10 a.m. Madam Clerk, please read the ordinance. Be ordained by the city council of the city of Chicago, section one, because an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent due to COVID-19, the next regular meeting of the city council in accordance with applicable law shall be conducted by video conference on Wednesday, May 26, beginning at 10 a.m. and shall provide for remote participation or remote viewing by members of the public. If prior to then the commissioner of health issues a written determination that the city council can safely proceed with an in-person meeting, the meeting will be held at a location to be determined and can safely accommodate a city council meeting. Any, any such written determination will be posted on the city clerk's website, along with an amended meeting agenda, which will include a fixed location by 10 a.m. on Monday, May 24, 2021. This ordinance shall take effect and will be inform, enforced and from and after its passage. And ladies and gentlemen, as a point of clarification, uh, it's my anticipation that at the next meeting, we will proceed as we are now, which is in person and some will be remote. Alderman Mitchell, do you move for passage of this uh, ordinance in the omnibus? Alderman Mitchell, you are muted. Unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, uh, Madam President, I move passage in the omnibus. <laughs> Hearing no objection, so order. <clears throat> um, the omnibus, uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Mitchell. I move that matters in the omnibus be passed by the affirmative vote present for the roll call to determine quorum. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Alderman Thompson on the motion to reconsider. Madam President, I move that we reconsider each and every vote. All those in favor of uh, the motion for reconsideration signify by saying aye. All those opposed say nay. Oh. Nay. The no's no. decidedly have it. 
The motion for reconsideration fails. Alderman Mitchell on a motion to adjourn. There being no further business before the body, I move that we adjourn by the opponent vote of all of the members present for the roll call to determine quorum. Hearing no objections, so ordered. The motion is carried. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.